In this video, we'll talk about how to find the pivots, the pivot columns, and the pivot rows of a matrix. So before we can find the pivots, the pivot columns, and the pivot rows, we need to make sure that a matrix is first in row echelon form. And there's two criteria that a matrix must meet to be in a row echelon form. The first is that all rows of zeros are at the bottom of the matrix, and the second criteria is that each pivot entry of a row is to the right of the pivot entry of any row above it. So let's check out an example. Let's say we have this matrix right here, and we want to find the pivots and the pivot columns and the pivot rows. Before we do that, we have to convert this matrix to row echelon form. So how can we do that? Well, in the first row, in this very first position, ideally this will be a non-zero value. So it's a one, so that's good. But we need all of the values below it to be zeros in order for this matrix to actually be in row echelon form. So how could we make this one and this two a zero? Well, notice that if we do row two minus row one, we would get one minus one, and this would become a zero. So let's start by doing that. Let's say row two is going to become row two minus row one. So what would that look like? Well, the first row won't change at all. We'll just rewrite those values. The second row will be one minus one, which is zero. Then we have five minus two, which is three. And then we have nine minus three, which is six. And then the last row didn't change at all. So we still have those values. All right, now we just need this value right here to be a zero in order for this matrix to be in row echelon form. So how can we make this a zero? Well, we could just do row three minus two times row one, because that would be two minus two, and that would get the zero that we need right here. So we'll say row three is going to become row three minus two times row one. So let's see what we get. So the first row doesn't change at all. The second row doesn't change at all either. And in the last row, we have two minus two times one. So two minus two, that's zero. Then we have four minus two times two, which is four. So four minus four is zero. And in the last row, we get six minus three times two. So six minus six, that's also zero. Okay, so this matrix is now in row echelon form. Or we'll just abbreviate it REF because it meets the criteria. If there are rows of all zeros, they're at the bottom of the matrix. So that's good. And each pivot entry of a row, or in other words, the first non-zero value in each row is to the right of every pivot entry above it. So once we have it in this form, the pivots are the first non-zero values in each row. So let's check out what those are. So in the first row, here's the first non-zero value. So this is our first pivot. And in the second row, here's our first non-zero value in this row. So that's a pivot. And notice that the last row is all zero values. So there are no pivots in that row. So we'd say there's two pivots right here, the one and the three. The pivot columns are simply the columns that contain the pivots. So our pivot columns would be column one and column two, because these are the two columns that contain the pivots. And then our pivot rows would be the first row and the second row, because these are the rows that contain the pivots. So let's check out another example. All right, let's say we have another matrix here, and we've already converted this matrix to row echelon form. We just want to know, what are the pivots, what are the pivot columns, and the pivot rows? Well, remember, the pivots are the first non-zero values in each row. So in this first row, here's the first non-zero value, this three right here. In the second row, here's our pivot, the one, it's the first non-zero value. And in our third row, here's our pivot, the first non-zero value. And notice in the last row, there are no non-zero values, so there are no pivots. So here's our three pivots. Now the pivot columns would be the first column, the second column, and the third column, because these are the three columns that contain the pivots. And our pivot rows would be the first row, the second row, and the third row, because these are the three rows that contain the pivots. All right, let's check out one more example. Let's say we have this matrix, and it is also already in row echelon form. So let's identify the pivots. Well, the first pivot would be the first non-zero value in the first row. So here's our first pivot. And the next row, we can see that the first non-zero value is this one right here. So here's another pivot. But notice the last two rows just contain all zeros. So there's no more pivots. These are the only two pivots that we have in this particular matrix. So the pivot columns would be the columns that contain these pivots. So that would be this first column and this fourth column right here. These are our pivot columns because they're the columns that contain the pivots. Now our pivot rows would be the first row and the second row, because these are the two rows that contain the pivots.
So those were just a few examples of how to identify pivots, pivot columns, and pivot rows.